and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Our very special guest today is Mr. Frank uh, Frizzy Sykes. Um, we're going to talk about his life, we're going to talk about his career, we might even tell him a few jokes. Um, so let's just go right ahead, just step on the gas and get right into it. Thanks for coming. Man, nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Man. It is a pleasure. Okay, so first question, who is Frank Sykes? Man, that's a loaded question. Who <laughs> is Frank Sykes, man? Um, I have a background in a lot of things, so uh, from being an actor to being an artist to being an officer to being a businessman to being uh, a beast in the game, but just to, to say who I am, I'm human. Uh, I'm a person with a lot of knowledge that tries to basically push out a lot of information to help people okay. uh, as much as I can. So if that was uh, to describe who is Frank Sykes, I would say that person that's trying to make change creatively. Okay. Good arts. Okay. All right. Are you from Nashville? Or you I was born in Nashville, raised in Columbia, Tennessee. So just 45 minutes south of here uh, okay. is where I actually attended school and graduated from high school at Columbia Central. Okay. Okay. So what? What's your, uh, in your opinion? What's the biggest difference between Nashville and, and Columbia? Oh man. Uh, as far as definitely country. Okay. Uh, down in Columbia, so it, it, it's not a Nashville. You're not finna have the biggest stores or the biggest malls. Okay. Small town, but being small, uh, it kind of built up to where you can actually have relationships with people stronger than just hiding by versus okay. in a major city. So that's a that's a big difference that uh, I noticed for from growing up in a, a country town. You you get to have better relationships with people mm -hmm. versus just seeing them every now and again. Okay. Okay, so um, spoken word artist. Yeah. How do you uh, how do you land on on that? Is that a calling? Is that a, is that inspiration? How, how do you fall there? Well, uh, I, I actually fell on already in my life. I've been acting on stages, performing okay. uh, in theater, and doing a lot of things as far as an entertainment. Uh, that started. Uh, since I was a drummer boy in the, in the uh, church plays, you know, for the Christmas time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in, in my life, one of the things that I've actually done was I was a deputy sheriff. Okay. Uh, and I was a deputy sheriff for eight years, and prior to that, I was in the prison for three years. So being involved uh, in seeing environments actually was my push uh, to creatively get out and do something more. Okay. Uh, be able to spread knowledge as creative as I can, because okay. I understood that our attention uh, was not really one of the things that we really focus on. So I had to creatively find a way um, to send messages. Uh, and that's where my spoken word actually comes from. When I actually do a lot of my poems, a lot of my speeches, you'll hear the messages creatively placed within a poem that I'm actually putting out there uh, to grab attention, okay. uh, to bring knowledge to someone who probably just isn't paying attention and needs that help or needs that word to basically push them through uh, or to the next obstacle that they're going to go through. So. Okay. All right. So, who, um, if you have any, um, who are your uh, your major influences for what you for what you do? <laughs> if I were to put anybody on the platform on the pedestal, I would say Muhammad Ali. Uh, okay. And the reason why I choose him uh, is because going against the grain is something that he did. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in life, you're gonna find those moments if you really want to make a difference or you really want to progress. You got to go against even yourself <laughs> right, sometimes right. to get there, and uh, that, that's a person that's motivated me to say, "Hey, uh, he pushed through all of his uh, issues. Mm -hmm. I'm pushed through mine." So. Okay, all right, very good, very good. So um, Nashville is a uh, is a growing is a growing town. It is. It seems to it look is. different every couple of months. So what, what, what do you think? Are, we, uh, are you good with the growth? Is it too fast? Is it too slow? What, what, what do you think about it? I, I don't think the city was ready for it. Okay. Uh, it's too fast um, in a sense. And, and then when it comes to, to the people in the population that's here already, uh, they weren't prepared as much as they should have been. Okay. Um, we, we're still playing catch up, as I would say, in the mm -hmm. South already. So in mm -hmm. playing catch up, mm -hmm. you don't want to throw something else in there. Mm -hmm. You have to catch up a little <laughs> fast. So right. it's like we're not catching up as far as, as, as what I'm concerned with, but uh, growth is always a good thing. Yeah. Uh, we we just gotta catch up a lot faster than what we are, mm -hmm. uh, so that we don't get left behind. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. 
So is there a uh, is there an end game with everything that you do, um, all your creative things and uh, entrepreneurial stuff? Is there a, is there an end game to what you want to do? Unfortunately, when I think about end game, it never ends. Okay. Uh, it never ends because okay. there's always a new baby born. There's always gotcha. another person growing up. There's always someone out there that's in an environment that has not had that exposure. So uh, consistently, as far as with the art and with the talent, it's always something that you're supposed to push and leave the legacy for someone else to carry or whatnot down the road. Uh, as far as my physical self, yeah, mm -hmm. well, when the grade comes, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's definitely an end game, right? <laughs> Can't go no more past that point, but definitely want to push as much as I can to help out as much as I can all the way up to that point. So, Okay. Okay, you, you seem to be a, uh, a, a spiritually influenced um, brother. I am. Yeah. So how does that affect um, what you do um, in, the, in the world? Oh, it affects me wholeheartedly, man. Uh, and, and understanding my energy and understanding my spirit and understanding my existence. Okay. Uh, it's my only purpose. Okay. I, I, I cannot give any other reason for doing anything for anybody except to, to allow that energy to have its existence, to have its impact, and then of course even once I'm gone, to be felt, mm -hmm. uh, to be carried mm -hmm. on by others. So mm -hmm. definitely uh, it, this, this, the existence of spirit, the existence of energy, the existence of the knowledge that I am, yeah. uh, and even the existence that I will be when I transition, definitely of course motivates and pushes me even through my art uh, to send those messages to people even as we're talking here yeah. uh, that lets people hear to understand that hey you're more than just this shell right. uh, past this shell yeah. of course you're going to leave impacts and you're going to transition on and that energy does not end uh, it just carries on into the next phase or the next person or the next being that basically picks up your role mm -hmm. and runs mm -hmm. definitely okay Okay, so um, let's let's take a bit of a left turn here. Uh, I was watching a movie the other night, mm -hmm. and um, there was a group of people that wanted to get something done, right? And uh, the guy who was running the, the meeting, he said that um, all the people uh, in the front mm -hmm. of this fight right now, they're all women. Mm -hmm. So he was he was standing in front of a group of guys, right, and he right. asked the guys, which ones of y'all are going to be prepared to come in and help us out with this, because that will impact the great Right. None of the dudes in the room wanted to be involved at all. <laughs> I was in a room with a bunch of guys, uh, it might have been two months ago, mm -hmm. and almost the exact same thing happened. Some people were really trying to get something done. They wanted the brothers to get involved, and none of them were interested. So um, what, what do you think about, about the, 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 the state or the activity or inactivity of men right now? How, how are we doing? That's my question. How oh, are we, doing? Oh, we <laughs> fell off. Okay. I will be open and honest and say the the man is not there. Uh, not by choice, though. Okay. Uh, a lot of things have happened over time, and that's what a lot of people kind of overlooked. I always play on environmental impacts. Okay. Uh, and if you understand your environment, you understand what's actually happening around you as well as internally to you. Mm -hmm. uh, as I explain to people, there's always two environments. There's an external that we physically see, mm -hmm. and then there's an internal that everybody has where you're thinking thoughts of yourself after you experience something uh, from the outside. So uh, in that impact of things that have happened, it's caused a lot of men, one, to struggle with having that firmness to say, okay, I'm gonna stand up there and, 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 and do my part. Mm -hmm. Uh, take that chance of putting my life on the line type mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but because of the happening, it, it's made us cower down because mm -hmm. we've seen mm -hmm. what happened. Like if we, yeah. we're coming up on January the 20th to celebrate mm -hmm. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. Day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen a man that stepped out there, stood out there, and again, got knocked down. So when you, when you have those things that uh, have been shown to you mm -hmm. over and over and over again, uh, psychologically, it takes its uh, toll on you. And it makes you say, hey, why am I going to keep stepping out there if ain't nobody going to help me, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to step out in front. I'll let somebody else do it. Uh, I, I hate uh, that our women, uh, again, yet again, it's, a, it's another thing that I feel happens within the environment. Uh, when they've been forced to step up, yeah. that's all they know to do now. Mm -hmm. While men are, are counting down, like, no, this is not going to happen to me again, they picking up our role and, and being on the front end, being the one that's fighting and whatnot. Uh, but that again comes from the impact of the happening. Uh, once you've been exposed to it so much, it kind of forces certain things to happen, 
whether good or bad. Uh, I don't like to blame anybody. Mm -hmm. I like us to wake up and acknowledge, hey, some stuff has happened. Mm -hmm. uh, figure this out. And at that point that you can realize what's happening, mm -hmm. maybe we can start this, this interaction to create a different environment to create better people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what it's going to basically take to cause that even shift. Uh, before I can tell them, man, hey, stand up and take that, mm -hmm. <laughs> that bullet. I got to get them to understand, hey, there's a purpose for you taking that bullet. There's a reason why you have to do that. There's a, there's a drive behind you that has to be in you first. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll never do it. Right. Uh, and if you don't understand that drive, how am I going to get you to do anything? Mm -hmm. So I, I agree. It, it's, it's not a good state that mm -hmm. we're in. Um, I would love us to be in a better state. I'd also would love for incarceration to drop. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so, no so when you have all these things, and like I said, being creatively played on you with an environment, you you got a lot of broken people. Mm -hmm. um, one of my poems that I actually wrote uh, is titled Broken. Uh, and in that poem, it creatively shows why we're broken and how we got broken and those things that basically make or impacted us to be what we're experiencing today. Uh, it's not a blame game thing. It's mm -hmm. happening that we have to recover from. Mm -hmm. And first, like I say, it comes with the acknowledging what it is so that we can shift into changes to what it should be. Okay. All right, so um, do you think or do you believe that it is possible to turn that, to turn that around? Yes, it's okay. possible. That's why I actually okay. do the things that I do. Okay. Uh, is it easy? No, <laughs> not at all. Uh, it's definitely possible, but it, it takes effort. It takes work. It takes sacrifice. Yeah. Um, I myself struggle every day mm -hmm. with what I understand to be, and, and, and this is a word that I know a lot of people are sensitive about, but ignorance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a real thing. It's when you lack knowledge mm -hmm. of anything, mm -hmm. you don't know anything else. So mm -hmm. if you don't have the knowledge of it to deal with it, you won't deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so like that becomes a struggle in itself of, hey, to somebody to where they can actually one pay attention mm -hmm. to focus so that they don't have ignorance mm -hmm. uh, uh, in every fight that I do daily. Um, but like I said, it's it's a it's a battle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to be easy. Yes, it can shift, but it's going to take continuous effort of people like myself, people that are in the community like Kwame Lillard that's doing things. I mean, there are people out here that's trying. Yeah. Uh, my elders, of course, I, I sit down and I talk with them sometimes and they say, hey, I'm tired, I fought long enough. It's time to pass this thing on to somebody else. And I look, I'm like, hold on, I'm the, I'm the only brother standing right here right now. We got to get some more first yeah. before y'all <laughs> hand this baton off. I can't be so. It, it just comes down to that thing of, of we got to build people to, to be about this uh, fight, about this movement, about this purpose, mm -hmm. uh, so we can cause that shift. Okay. All right, so if, if someone asks you to define uh, manhood, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? Man. <laughs> to define manhood, that's a, ooh, that, that's <laughs> tricky. And I'm going to tell you why it's tricky to me. It's tricky to me because we, we have this environment of saying, hey, man's supposed to take care of house, home, mm -hmm. uh, have a job, be the protector, right. or things of that nature. So, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, but if I was just to break it down in its simplest form, um, man, we we so I, 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 we're not there so much that it's, it's kind of kind of hard to even define what it is because uh, to to be a man is a person to stand on your own feet in all situations. You can't be one to say, well, because they're doing it, I'm just gonna follow the trend of things. You literally have to search and, and find truth in your own understanding and then at that point stand on it. Mm -hmm. uh, to me that's what makes you more of a man. I don't even care if your truth is wrong mm -hmm. or <laughs> if we're going to say wrong or right again that's defined by environment mm -hmm. but standing on it, holding up to it and then and, and not wavering or moving from it, to me that makes manhood kind of stand out more strong than what we're doing today. Uh, everybody today to me it seems like we're going with the trend. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to have the next nicest shoes or the the flyest car, the biggest house type thing. When I'm like myself, I don't care about a house, a car, a shoe. It's not if we're not in the right space. If I got somebody over here struggling, why am I getting the biggest house while he's standing outside in the rain? Right, so, right. Uh, to to that's the best way that I can really define it as myself is finding truth and then standing on it. 
uh, the way that it should be, regardless uh, of what influences, what impacts, what things cause you to think differently or may try to make you think differently. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't make you think differently, but that's manly. Okay, okay, I got you. So, um, being um, being men of of color, mm -hmm. um, there's there's a there's unique um, challenges that go along with that. Yeah, that had nothing to do with either one of us, right? Right. 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 <laughs> didn't cause it. Yeah, didn't didn't choose, right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. So one of the, one of the things that used to be an influencer for us um, was was the church. One of the one of the quote unquote safest places right, right. used to be church. So, um, what's the impact that the church is having right now, if it's still having one? Bad question. Is the church still relevant right now? That's that's the question I want to ask. <laughs> I can't judge them all. Okay. So let me let me plug <laughs> that right here. This does not represent all churches because again, there are some churches that still have that intention of impact of growth for the people. Yeah. Um, but a lot of churches now have swung over uh, to kind of helping us go down the drain. Uh, and, and that's as creative as I can put it. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and go, go blunt. Uh, they're hurting us. <laughs> uh, that, that they're having an impact. So yes, it's an impact, but it's not really helping uh, the way it used to be, like I say, back in the day, it used to be a safe place. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a place that we we went to to congregate, to yeah. meet, yeah. even to strategic plan yeah. uh, our next steps to yeah. to progress or whatever we're going to do mm -hmm. uh, to make whatever change or whatever impact that we needed mm -hmm. uh, at the time. But today, that's not what's happening in a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. Today, it's um, a mental illness, if I can say that without being so offensive to everyone. But I like it, that. It kind of it kind of keeps you in a, a mindset uh, and stuck and stagnant in a certain place versus progression. Now it's like we it's happy that we got to this point and we're fine with it, so we're going to stay here type of thing and type of mentality that kind of has over people. And that's coming from someone who was a preacher's kid. My father was a minister, right? So uh, I, I leave that out because there's so many things that I've done. In life, right? I'm 35 now, so a lot has happened. A lot of stuff has changed, but um, I, I don't see. Uh, that impact anymore. Uh, I do see a impact, but it, I'm, I, don't, I don't like it. I actually, uh, I will go to church. I went to church for New Year's because okay. a, a, a friend of mine's mother asked me to go, and I don't want nobody to feel like uh, I'm so mad at the church that I can't go or, or be in the place. Uh, but when it comes down to saying, hey, what is this doing to help us? I don't see the impact of, of what it was back then uh, versus what it is now. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let me um, let, let me stir up some trouble. All right. Is there a difference between? Um, okay, so we're classified often two different ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're called black men. Sometimes we're called men of color. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between these two these two ideas in your view? Black man and men of color. They're both the same person for sure. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. But. Uh, because I'm aware of the weight of words, mm -hmm. black has its negative connotation versus man of color. Mm -hmm. So when you say uh, a black man, it almost seems like it's saying a bad person mm -hmm. versus saying a man of color sounds like a good person that is accomplishing some things and, and, and doing some positive things for, for anybody. So mm -hmm. they, they definitely have two different green tones in my ear. Mm -hmm. When I hear black man versus man of color, mm -hmm. so is there a way to sort of define um, what it means to be a black man, or is there a way to define what it means to be a man of color? Because, because, like you said, there, there's there's um, there's a there's a negative there's a negative weight on the word black and it, it, it black didn't do anything wrong but for some reason <laughs> when you attach black man for whatever reason there's a weight but when you say man of color it seems to be seems to, it doesn't really it's seem to be nice it, it's okay. soft <laughs> let me say it's soft still bad though to okay. me because uh and, and this is me exposing my knowledge and my exposure to things okay uh, 
for color to come into play mm -hmm. is already a divisional thing. Okay. That's meaning to say that you are not like me, I'm not like you, and it causes separation mm -hmm. regardless of how nice or soft the blow is done, right? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So I, I, both of them I want to state I, I don't like because of the, the dividing thing uh, and especially of, of understanding when did black and white come into play in America and how that kind of uh, was creatively done systematically to kind of cause division that is working. Mm -hmm. uh, so to even to even stand on saying I'm a man of color mm -hmm. is kind of trouble uh, for me because at that <laughs> point you, if you're not conscious, you're blindly not seeing yourself take yourself out of the equation of being just another man or another human or another yeah. person that has the same ability as the next person. Mm -hmm. um, to me, division is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So I try to avoid it uh, all together, but uh, in defining uh, <laughs> the two, uh, I, I don't. I, I wouldn't even say that they're different things. I would have to define it as as understanding that usually when, when in this environment, when someone says that black man, they're not in a nice way uh, wanting to address you as who you are. Uh, uh, it is defined <laughs> as again still a man of color but usually attached to you did something wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, or you're going or to. Or you're going <laughs> to do something wrong, or we expect you to do something wrong. Uh, yeah. So if I was to define black man, uh, and again, it's different, it rings different to people. So like as a black man, here in black man, yeah. oh, I'm a black man, you know, I'm proud of it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I hold some pride to being that color, uh, but again, when we play it in other people's ears that are outside of us and probably of a different color, uh, even to say the colored man is kind of... It lands wrong. It lands wrong. <laughs> because it, it feels like <laughs> you're not supposed to be here, right? Uh, huh, I, I, I can't define them, honestly. They're the same thing. No, I can't define them differently. They're the same thing being a person, for me, in the simplest form, being a person... Uh, of black or or uh, this hue of, of mm -hmm. color, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't see a difference other than the fact of one may be nicely said versus the other <laughs> you know, smacking your face. No. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so I'm a uh, I'm, I'm I'm a musician before I'm anything else. Understood. And one of the things that um, I learned early on, um, especially in band situations, mm -hmm. is everybody brings something different on purpose and it's it's embracing those differences that mm -hmm. makes the band work right so <clears throat> why do you think it is so difficult for people to embrace other people's differences in 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 open situations it's not like a band okay and, and the reason why i'm saying that is even though band have different sections and different uh parts that uh, do their own separate thing. Mm -hmm. They come together and produce music. Mm -hmm. um, what we do as different people, mm -hmm. for some odd reason, we can't seem to come together <laughs> and play the music. Mm -hmm. Our music is our music. Yeah. Your music is your music. <laughs> that music is that music. Mm -hmm. You know, we and we by accident. Again, it's, it's not a blame thing, but it's just one of those things that happens when you're divided psychologically. Yeah. Um, so until we, we get past or, or one acknowledge mm -hmm. that that's a division, mm -hmm. that that creates issues, not fix issues, mm -hmm. we'll never be able to be a people to really kind of come together. We ain't acknowledging the problem yet. Yeah, we, We're staying blind to it and we're not looking at, hey, when I say this is my music, <laughs> yeah. or I'm in this section, yeah. I still got to play my instrument together with everybody else. You can't do it when you have the psychological thought process of mm -hmm. ours is different from yours. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I ask that question is because, man, the most beautiful song that can ever be written is life. Right. Right? That's the greatest experience, right? It is. And so in any band situation, in any situation where it's like, I know everybody can't play horns. Right. We all know that in advance. Matter of fact, we call y'all because you play, you play flute. Mm -hmm. Or we called you because you play guitar. It's like, um... There are certain situations where you call the people that you know can do it. Mm. But in life, it's it's like, no, you're different. So, you know, you got to, we just kind of have to, you didn't grow up with us, you ain't one of us. 
So, you know, we just need to be cool. <laughs> the song ain't getting played that way. Right. The, the, the song ain't getting played at all at that yeah, point. Because, absolutely. again, that's what's happening. Yeah. Uh, so in, in music, it, it's sad that some things can kind of take us away from life. Mm -hmm. Where we don't even think about living, right? Right. We'll be in the dream world and you hear the music and you hear the song and nothing is in your mind other than the, the melody that's playing. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this situation, <laughs> it's more than just the melody. Mm -hmm. There's feelings and emotions just because I see a color right. that, again, I didn't choose. Right. That was forced on me on, on my side, mm -hmm. on their side, on right. anybody's side. Uh, and then, then this, again, psychological play of system tactics. Like I said, when these things are bred in our environment, and we're not dealing with the issue of them being in our environment. We're just allowing them to stay. Uh, one of the things I have a problem with some people doing is they say, you, know, you just stop talking about it to go away. But well, that's not true because right. it's still there. Right. You know? right. uh, and, and if by now it hasn't went away, we got to start doing something different because we tried <laughs> in that process. So uh, it, it just becomes a thing of, of we have to acknowledge our problem first uh, so that we can work through what we need to do to be able to play the melody together, uh, to be able to hear the music the same, yeah. or to be able to work together, regardless of whatever divisional thing may be happening. Because yeah. we shouldn't be, to me, we shouldn't be divided, regardless. Right. Have some things happen, yep, yeah. on purpose, intentionally done. Right. Mm -hmm. um, can we get past those things? Only if we, we get ourselves to a space of being strong enough to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that, that's facing the monster, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to yeah. deal with it. No doubt. Not no run doubt. from yeah. it. Is it possible to overcome... Some people hadn't acknowledged it yet. I believe some people have. Mm -hmm. um, but the way I'm going to frame this, I don't know if I've heard it too many times. Is it possible to overcome um, the segregation in the house? Meaning segregation among us <laughs> and the issues amongst us. I'm talking about the light skin versus the dark, dark skin, skin thing. I'm talking yeah. about the, the educated versus the quote unquote non educated. Is it, is it possible to, to overcome that line? Possibilities sometimes are very small. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to say it's not possible, but I do want us to understand how small of a chance or how small of a possibility that is because, again, it's, it's that acknowledging, we have to really acknowledge what we're doing. Uh, because some of us are out here, yes, you say some people do acknowledge it, but some of us, we're, we're asleep. Mm -hmm. We don't realize <laughs> the craziest thing that I see happening is the same person that will speak about the issue mm -hmm. will be the same person creating the issue. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So it's like, right. yeah. <laughs> how do we fix something you start and you don't, and you don't see you start? Right. So right. like a comedian right. to tell a joke, right? Yeah. He's a comedian. Mm -hmm. They're just like having fun. Mm -hmm. They just jokes. Yeah. But as we already understand, jokes have impact. No doubt. They're felt no doubt. differently from different people. So mm -hmm. if I'm telling a joke about a fat person, mm -hmm. all the skinny people may laugh, yeah. fat people are offended. Yeah. And we just have to be <laughs> conscious <laughs> that maybe we shouldn't be telling the joke. Yeah, we gotta sit ourselves down and say, well, maybe you know, sometimes I can't live thinking about my selfish needs, my selfish wants, my selfish things, mm -hmm. because I'm the cancer. Mm -hmm. I'm creating a problem, mm -hmm. and we got to not allow the the systematic thinking of well, they, they're gonna be the way that they are, mm -hmm. regardless of what you do. So just do it anyway. No, that's the fed mentality to keep you doing destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, so it comes down to yes. We can, we can fix it, but we really have to own it. <laughs> we really have to own mm -hmm. our part. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't, well, I've always at one point when I, before I started doing spoken word, I was always telling myself, somebody gotta do this, somebody, somebody gotta fix this, somebody gotta, I'm waiting for somebody to, until I realize that somebody is you. Mm -hmm. You sit up there and do all the talking about somebody, and somebody is the, the you are embodied in the person that's supposed to do it, and that's what made me say, okay, let me be that somebody. Mm -hmm. So now I don't have to look for nobody to do it, <laughs> be that somebody. And, and, and again, it took me time. I wasn't the perfect person. I ain't the perfect person. I probably still by accident will make mistakes, uh, but trying to be more aware and more conscious of what I'm doing so that I don't create uh, more problems than what we're fixing. So, yeah, it, it, it could be done, but it's gonna take a lot of self-examination. Uh, a lot of people looking at the things that they're doing and why they're doing them. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. what's motivating them to do them. If it's always money motivating you to do something, yeah. you better be careful mm-hmm. because money will make you jump off a cliff. No doubt. Um, so we got to fight that again. We just can't run from. Mm-hmm. We have to face it. Yeah. Uh, is Emotional as it may be, <laughs> but it just has to be dealt with. It has to be done. Um, will it happen in our lifetime? Hopefully, at least get started. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and that's what I'm hoping. At least start to talk, start to trend, so that maybe in somebody's lifetime down the road, we can look back and say, you know what? Just like when King did this, we got here. Mm-hmm. When Frizzy did this, mm-hmm. we got there. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. That's what I look forward to. Okay, so um, most of what you said, uh, one of the things that seems to be the underlying, um, the, the sort of the bed of your, your statements was um, personal responsibility. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, how, how much uh, responsibility should we take for our brothers? How much personal responsibility should we take for the rest of our people because some of the issue requires someone to say um, you have these problems let me let me help love you through this stuff so that you can get healed that's that's an enormous responsibility it is. and so some people are some people's position is well that's really your problem it's not really mine or it's it's that's y'all's thing right because right. y'all are on that side of the color line and we're over here dealing with something different so how much responsibility should we take to uplift one another oh 100 percent uh because again as i stated sometimes people don't see their own problems mm-hmm. um real short story uh, i stood outside on jefferson street uh, at a business that i actually had at one point uh, which is right across uh, from paul's market mm-hmm. And as you watch Paul's Market 24-7, the doors never stop, the mm-hmm. traffic never stop, mm-hmm. uh, and you know it's a negative environment, drug activity, a lot of stuff that's kind of going on. Right. Uh, but I was outside right across the street with some people, and, and we were just looking. You know, at one point, we was the people that would have been in a lot of Paul's Market because to us, that was our normality. Mm-hmm. We didn't see it as an issue. Mm-hmm. We seen this as us having fun, we're right. living, we're doing things. So it wasn't a problem while some other adults was across the street where we are now mm-hmm. saying these husbands got to change, you know, <laughs> having the whole different thought process. Um, so when, I, when I'm able to, to make myself aware of where I was at certain points in my life, you have to understand how brainwashed someone else is where they are in their life. Uh, and we're not all there at the same time. Right. Uh, some people it takes longer, some people it happens faster, you know. Uh, so when that is happening and understanding how that is happening and what's causing it to happen, uh, the creativity of an environment uh, that, again, sometimes you just don't have no control of. Mm-hmm. We could have said, hey, let me be this color, <laughs> you know, we've been fine, but you, you yeah. have no control over right. that, as well as the other things that are happening in the environment. Right. Uh, uh, dealing with with kids uh, and troubled kids, you find that the home is already kind of in shambles to where it's causing a troubled kid. Mm-hmm. Can't blame the kid for being troubled because the home ain't fixed. Right. Uh, so it, it takes those bold enough to not say, well, that's his mama's fault. No, it's not mama's fault because if you run that yeah. back down the line, you find out something else created yeah. that problem. And it's usually a man uh, back there. And, and, yeah. and it's just, it's trauma yeah. all the way through yeah. that until somebody says, you know what, stop passing blame and, and, and take ownership of it, regardless of if I know this person or not, yeah. Yeah. then we cannot expect change. We cannot, I get upset. I was a deputy sheriff for eight years, and, and again, three years prior I was in the prison, but I was upset that I felt like everybody that was innocent, everybody that was innocent, because again, yes, they may have done the crime, but could they really control what they've done? Was there some forces that created that mentality to say, you know what, I gotta eat. Okay. So I'm finna rob this store because mm-hmm. I don't got no other way that I think I can eat mm-hmm. instead of robbing this store, which landed them here, or robbing some person. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we can eliminate those environments existing, we can correct problems. Mm-hmm. But again, that takes us to say 100%, you gotta be mine. Yeah. It can't be, 
Well, I'm gonna let him deal with that 50 over there. <laughs> I'm gonna take this 25 and I'm gonna wait for somebody else to take that 25. Mm -hmm. No, we have to own it and we have to change it. That's the only way change to me really is gonna come about. And if we're scared, I understand, I get it, fear. But we're not supposed to be fearful. Gotcha. Not that I understand, none of that. Yeah. If, yeah. if that spirit wasn't given to us, what's teaching us that? Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's a whole nother <laughs> fight <laughs> that you gotta have with self to say, you know what, get rid of fear. Yeah. Step out there and make something happen. Yeah. Uh, I do it every time when I go on stage. I, a lot of people think it's easy going on stage. You always get that, oh, no. You get that hard, people. You know, the bigger the crowd, get the worse it seems to get sometimes. But again, I can say, you know what, I ain't going out there, or I'm gonna say, you know what, that ain't that ain't what's gonna keep me from doing what I need to do, yeah. and I'm gonna step out there and make it happen. So we gotta own it, all the way up to 100 percent, regardless of the situation, regardless of the crime. And I, again, I, I am stating this, and I'm standing firm on it, like a man should, mm -hmm. regardless of the crime uh, that someone has done, because. If you really look at it, there's some things that are happening that's impacting or causing that to happen. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to deal with that to stop that from happening in the first place, well, you can't be mad when it happens again. Because mm -hmm. it's going to happen again. And it's, it's a repeating thing. Yeah. This world that we, we're living in is a cycle. Yeah. Uh, it just keeps on cycling around and around and around until yeah. somebody is going to stick that spoke, mm -hmm. or that, that stick in the spoke of the wheel mm -hmm. and stop it. Yeah. All right, so if you hand. were hand, if right. you were the president mm -hmm. of the corporation known as the United States of America, <laughs> what would be the first three things that you would do? You was elected last week. What would you do? The first three things that I would do. First, if I had the power with you, you don't have the power to do it, but the first thing I would do was stop it. Okay. I would shut it down. Okay. Uh, one, one, of the, one of the things, and when I say shut it down, I'm talking about the systematic process. It, it has to be rebooted. Uh, just like any system, any computer, any body, any person, you gotta lay down and go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, you gotta turn the computer off and reboot it sometime because it starts running or dragging kind of slow. Yeah. But this system has not had its moment of, even though they had the government shut down, that's not the shutdown I'm talking about. Okay. Basically, a lot of uh, somebody asked me like, how, how do we fix this problem? I said, well, you, you gotta shut it down and then sit everybody at the table. You cannot set up something that only certain people were part of mm -hmm. to be able to say, okay, this is the system and it's supposed to work for everybody. No, everybody wasn't there. So if I could, the first thing I would do is set it, shut it down, sit us all at the table, and let's really set this thing out the way it should be so that we, we're all inclusive. Okay. We're not dividing uh, anybody out of it or not including somebody in it or not you know, punishing somebody for, hey, you're that color, so... <laughs> You're not supposed to be here, and it's, mm -hmm. so first thing. That's the first thing I would do. Okay. <laughs> uh, second thing um, that that's a more, uh, and I, I guess this can be seen as a more selfish thing, but uh, I, we definitely have to train law enforcement better. Okay. Uh, it got out of hand. There used to be a time that law enforcement was about the people, but now to me it seems like law enforcement is a system objective. Uh, to be accomplished. It's a, it's a militant style thing okay. uh, that's out of hand uh, because of fear. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and because that is fed so much, we got a whole lot of things that are happening that none of us are happy with. But we're allowing it to happen and creatively pacifying the situations as they happen mm -hmm. uh, instead of fixing them. Uh, so as a president, definitely, I would have to, to do that. Uh, the, again, we're, we're dealing with people that have been broken. So I, I do need the impact of a force there, but not to punish. We need to be trained differently to help, to aid, and to assist. Uh, that was one of the things as I was trained as an officer. You sometimes got to help the person that can't help themselves. Uh, and, and the word was help, not hurt the person that can't help themselves. Okay. Um, so different mentality would have to be trained as an officer. And then, of course, um, it, it, my third thing, I'm not, I can't say I'm mad at the, the process of the way that things are happening, um, but education uh, has to be mm -hmm. tampered with. It, it has mm -hmm. to be, um, again, <laughs> One of the people that I looked up to in life, they told me, 
history is told by the side who won. Mm -hmm. uh, which creatively says the reason why the knowledge is being given the way that it's given is mm -hmm. because we created it to be that way. Right. I don't like that. Uh, I want all sides of the story to be told. Mm -hmm. I want full knowledge to be there, not just my knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, and that creatively is going to have to to be implemented through uh, institutional learning. Gotcha. Um, to tell the whole story, not just half of my part. Uh, so those things I would attack, definitely education, definitely law enforcement, mm -hmm. then first shut that system down and reboot this the way it's supposed to be. Okay. If, if <laughs> it's possible. But we're not even gonna play that game in America, that's not small possibility. It's really a small possibility that we can accomplish that. All right, all right. Okay, so um, who is the, uh, I won't get us in trouble, mm -hmm. but it's all right. Who, who's, the, who's the biggest enemy to, uh, to black people, is it? Um, I'm specifically talking about the men and the women. Is it us, or is it the other group? Mm, you, you trying to get us in real? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so you want me to pick between men and women? Being yeah, who's hurt? Who's hurt? Who's hurt us the most? Wee. Yeah, we finna, we finna, we finna, we finna get into this one. But I, again, this is one of those monsters that we gotta take hold of. And I'm not blaming nobody. Again, let me clarify. This is not the blame game, even though he's asking me a question to blame some people. But I'm not blaming. But I, we just gonna be all the way real and understand the happening. And this is what I want to talk about. So in the happening of things. Uh, and the understanding of, of history and the, and, the, and the things that passed. Um, some things happened to men mm -hmm. that kind of, kind of took us out of understanding who we were, yeah. understanding ourselves as a man. Right. Uh, and as those things happened, some things happened to women mm -hmm. that made them to be the way that they are. So as the man was losing his life, mm -hmm. the woman was watching. And lose life. Yeah. So it had different impacts. So I've lost my life. You still have yours, but you've seen me lose my life. Yeah. So in that happening of things, one of the things that I actually acknowledge happening is fear guides a woman's control. Okay. Uh, and to me, I don't, I don't like it, but I, it's, a, it's more of a systematic thing that's happening to use woman against man. Uh, and as it's using woman against man, man is trying to fight to recover and understand who he is. But woman is fearful of the happening because she watched it happen. So yeah. by accident, the stuff she's going to do is everything that's kind of working against man. Uh, when he's trying to stand up, she's barking, you ain't standing up the right way kind of thing. Uh, and what ends up happening, not blaming, but woman... Uh, tend to be the be the issue of, of us getting where we need to be. Blindly though, but and they don't see it. I, I, I talk to a lot of women, I love a lot of women, and I tell them uh, one of the things that we talk about is truly and really understanding love. Yeah. Uh, and when we get into a love thing, a lot of people go into the feeling and emotions. Okay. And I tell them your feeling and emotions are your your flaws of being human mm -hmm. and they'll lead you the wrong direction every time because yeah. you're just feeling off of, off of an environment and teaching of how things should feel. So if I tell you a real man is supposed to take care of you and, and never make you feel bad or what, what the players do the same thing, yeah. right? No the pimp will do the same <laughs> thing. No that's your feelings and that's your emotions that are being used against you whereas, and it's working mm -hmm. because you'll see a woman that will deal with the worst what the man be like, he the worst dog ever, but but she staying happy or I don't even say happy, but she's staying with them she cook for the wrong reasons yeah. of whatever emotional or feeling thing yeah. uh, that's happening. So so just to get into the meat of things, women, um, not by choice, not by blame, but by the happening of things in life, um, are carrying a, a psychological thought process that is hurtful. Um, that that if they don't wake up to it, they'll continue to be hurtful. Um, one thing I tell a lot of people, your mama will love you so much that she'll kill you. No doubt. 
Yeah. Uh, and it's not that she's doing all the wrong things to hurt you, but because she wants you to have so much from her suffering mm -hmm. that she won't pay attention that she's giving you too much and it's bad for you. Yeah. Um, uh, again, that becomes those emotions and those feelings that kind of guide and control mama's hand right. because she wants the best for you. Yeah. And in her mind, the best is you have everything. Yeah. Um, that's my answer. Okay. No blame, okay. again. <laughs> but, okay, so but we, we have to deal with those those feelings and emotions that kind of guide us into action. Gotcha. Well, we're on the edge, so let me just yeah, push this over a little, a little further. Who's, um, who's hurting? Uh, I'm going to make this specific to black women. Who, who's hurting them the most? Is it them or is it us? Who's hurting the black woman the most? Yeah. Who's causing them the most pain? Is it them or is it themselves? Damn. Don't get mad at him. I asked the question. <laughs> It's his fault, <laughs> but I have to answer it because I, I'm a truthful type person. Um, so when it, when it comes to again the happening and what's going on in our environments, um, the black woman is hurting herself, okay. uh, not by choice, but again by a, by a blind force when she's looking for things that she shouldn't be looking for okay. because it's, it's fed to her by her environment by by force and not by her control, um, she's wanting answers that are not really there. Uh, and as those things are not being answered, it's a ripple effect. It's then, of course, you ain't man enough, or you ain't this, or, uh, and it's that pass down of aggression or feeling and emotion uh, that, again, is fed by uh, a systematic design of disaster. Um, I don't want her to be there, well, that's one of the things I actually, like I say, as a spoken word, I address it, I speak on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I say some things that they hear, I write some things that I know that they'll read and have an impact yeah. uh, to make them think. Mm -hmm. uh, because to me, that's where we kind of start doing the self-examination. If I can say something to make you start thinking to yourself, mm -hmm. it is at that point that you're starting to establish somewhat control of self yeah. so that you can really deal with reality, mm -hmm. not this fantasy world. Mm -hmm. Um, that's fed to you by TV, by, by whatever. Um, um, but just jumping off that cliff, women, Baxter wanted me to tell you. <laughs> TV all wanted me to tell you that you are the problem. <laughs> You're not a problem though, but, the, but we really just have to kind of, we, we have to wake up uh, to uh, the things that have, have impacted us the most. Uh, and that are, are creating our own issues that really, uh, if we we'll wait to them and, and focus on uh, fixing them, we can do it. Okay. All right, so last couple things. First, let's do a little word association. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'll give you one word. You tell me the first thing that pops in your head. All right. Um, money. <laughs> Evil. Father. Missing. Mother. Their church. Problem. <laughs> Bible. Brainwash. <laughs> America. Broken. Woman. Mm. Broken. That was valid. That's I'm gonna say the first thing that comes to mind. Church. Broken. I understand. I get I, I totally I totally get you. Alright, um, um mm. construct. Mm. I don't even know what comes to my mind. <laughs> Needed. Okay, okay. <laughs> Education. Woo. So many things flew in my head at that one time. <laughs> Troubled is the, is the, what kind of defines all those things that flew in my head. Teachers. Underpaid. Strength. Weakness. Leadership. Gone. <laughs> oh my. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Trump. That was because of you. I'm just going to say it. Gone. Ain't no leadership. Gone. Lord have mercy. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's that's um that's it. Before I let you go, uh, do you have anything that you want to promote? Anything that's coming up? 
Man, always, and as everybody know, you can always plug in to frizzyproductions.com. Everything that I actually run or do operates off of that page. I'll put it there, FP Events. If you want to attend any of the events I have, you can, of course, follow me on any social media by searching Frank Frizzy Sykes. If you want to just do one specific one, I suggest you go to Instagram, which is Frizzy, F-R-I-Z-Z-Y, and three twos, 222. Two. Those three twos are just my birthday, February the 22nd. I take all donations, so be giving <laughs> on February the 22nd. But other than that, it's been fun, it's been real, it's been a blessing. I'm glad to be here. Fantastic. Last thing, advice. Somebody who wants to be a spoken word artist. They've decided they're ready to jump out there and do it. What's, what's some advice you can give them? First thing, I want you to be confident in yourself. Uh, because a lot of people have been asking me that. Um, and, and they don't understand that it, it takes you to be confident in what you want to do. Stop waiting for someone to give you permission. Stop waiting for someone to say, okay, it's your time now. You determine that and then you make it happen. Uh, it's no magic to it. Uh, it's literally just words and being passionate about your purpose. Uh, why you're walking through life and why you're doing the things that you're doing. Be passionate about it. Be uh, strong enough uh, to exert and say it. Uh, and always be understanding that what you say, what you do will always be impactful. So be careful. Uh, guide your words in a way to, to be more successful uh, in life for people, not damaging. Fantastic. Well Thanks for being a part of the show, man. Look forward to seeing you again. Always. Appreciate it. Yes,